With strong growth in its economy and positive engagement in the international arena, China is gaining in favorable views worldwide. But does this translate into growing respect for its leadership and development model? In Africa and Europe, China is often viewed favorably, but in some countries in Asia, things are different. What are the reasons behind this? While the United States' status as the largest economy is still recognized by many countries, some countries are recognizing China as the most influential economic power in the world. What implications will this shift have on how the two countries interact with the rest of the world? With the gap in the world's overall perception of China and U.S. economic influence narrowing, China is being viewed as more of a leader. How can China better approach the leadership challenges it faces? The latest Pew Global survey shows China and the United States as neck and neck in the global popularity contest, with more countries seeing China as the world's top economic power. There have been dramatic shifts in favorable views towards China in sub-Saharan Africa and Latin America, and people in Western Europe are tending to see China instead of the United States as the global economic leader. This contrasts with Asia, where Japan, South Korea, Vietnam, and India gave their positive vote to the U.S., suggesting that China may have, been, may have to re-examine the regional challenges to its global image. To discuss these topics and more today, I'm very happy to be joined in the Beijing studio by Claire Pearson, International Development Director of DRA Piper, Hannah Ryder, China representative of the China Africa Advisory, and James Arusi Antanga, editor from the South Sudan Broadcasting Corporation. That's our topic. This is Dialogue. I'm Yang Ray. Question is very simple, Claire. What do you think of the shift in the attitude between different uh, peoples in uh, Europe, Asia, and Africa? I think that the shift in attitude is all, there's a complete shift in the global economic center of gravity towards China. So whereas before people were looking to the US for their biggest market for their business in the next five to 10 years, today the global middle class is going to be Chinese and people are looking to China to keep their company buoyant in the next decade. Maybe your neighbor does not agree with you about the <laughs> exactly. exact picture you have drawn. I hope us. He does. <laughs> exactly. The shift could vary from region to region and continent to continent. In Africa, basically we still look at our colonial masters as the only source and the only hope and a helping hand to the African countries. It may be China in this 20th century, but an African person would not, wouldn't agree on that concept. Hannah? Well, I'm also an African person and also a Brit, uh, two, uh, two personalities in a sense. Um, these, these are quite difficult shifts. I think part of the shift is to do with China itself, and also the shifts are to do with the other countries. In countries like the UK and so on, there is an increasing feeling that globalization isn't working and maybe mm. China is a new, a new path. At the same time, in African countries, Kenya, where I'm from, we see China as, as a hope. Uh, but it's still something which is a little bit far off. We're still working on issues domestically, like in infrastructure and so on. So I think I agree with both of my colleagues here uh, that that we that there are di there are different reasons for these shifts interesting here is a, a fundamental reason that may explain clearly why there are huge differences in their perception about the image of china those in asia are very close to china and they are afraid of the mere size of this big economy they say there are too many and certain implications about the rise of China and therefore they cannot say for sure whether China would come across as a blessing or a curse for their future. You, Claire, you have lived and worked in China for years. So what do you think of this, this fundamental reason? I think there's sort of a schizophrenic relationship with your near neighbors. You know, I always hear that, oh, China and Japan, we're not friends, but I was just having lunch with one of my Chinese friends and he said, yeah, my, my wife will be visiting Japan five times this year. 
uh, for, for different vacations, etc. And et he or she is a Chinese. Absolutely. So, I mean, I heard that 1.5 million Chinese will visit for Japan for a holiday this summer. So, on one hand, politically, we're apparently not meant to be that close. But that's slightly different from what happens in business and what happens socially. But I'm afraid the number of Chinese tourists who travel to Japan will be put to shame definitely by the huge number of 130 million Chinese tourists who went abroad last year, according to the official statistics. This is a big shortened arm for Western economies, perhaps. Mm -hmm. But is it the case for Africa? I mean, do you think Chinese tourists or the Chinese investors, Chinese workers in Africa, who would project more of a real image about China? I don't see the Chinese workers uh, projecting the real image of China in the African context. You find Africa is one of the countries that, that was mainly, that has for, for years, depended on the colonial masters and all the education system, the way of work, the white collar kind of work always is looked in that angle of the colonial masters. So with the Chinese coming and introducing a new ideology, the new way of life, the new way of working, it's, they, they find it something so much complex that they cannot transform immediately to become a Chinese mo mode of working, uh, to follow the Chinese mode of working. Mm -hmm. So that, that has brought a conflict, and a uh, conflict of uh, where to to, to lie on. China might have uh, caught up attention from the political angle, but mm. the social angle, that one is still lacking. Yeah. Time and again, James refers to the British or European mm. legacy exactly. that they have left behind in mm. Africa. Do you believe this contributes a lot to the sense of uncertainty for Africans? I think. Um, there, there is a, there are a range of different partners that Africa has had, uh, had, now has over time. The different countries in Africa have different partners, and what is incumbent on the African governments, in particular, is to try to assess what they can get out of each different partner depending on what that partner has to offer. A decent part of the British legacy or European uh, colonialism mm. is good education for the elites, but they. But this part of the legacy may have also generated strife and conflict, such as uh, uh, the civil stress, civil strife we saw in Rwanda in the early 1990s, uh, the Tutsi and the Hutu. Now, the brutal massacre between the two tribes uh, was very much underlined by the elite education that uh, Tutsi received in France. So, do you think? Uh, this kind of a conflicting signals coming from the colonial background may have also undermined effectively the, their perception about the image of China. I think um, these, these histories and changes in African countries, many of them are very violent histories and those violent histories still continue even in places like South Sudan and so on. They're very difficult to untangle and it's also very difficult to say who is who's necessarily at fault. However, I think what is important is that in terms of the relationship with China now that those countries don't fall into the same old traps so for example if we're talking about education that there is an there is an effort by the African governments to make sure that every, the education benefits in partnership with China are spread beyond just the elites uh, mm. or you know that it is not just the elites who are coming for the scholarships uh, to China, that there's many other people who can participate in that, um, especially because there are so many young people who want jobs and employment now in African countries. They really need to take charge. James, do you think it is the behavior of the individual Chinese, uh, tourists, uh, entrepreneurs, investors, uh, businessmen, or quality of the Chinese product that have shaped your perception about the image of China? We look at the way, the behaviors of the uh, the, entrepreneur, uh, who, uh, the entrepreneurs that arrive to Africa from China and also the quality of their products. Leave alone looking at the quality of the products, uh, we come to the way of work. The Chinese tend to work more hours than uh, according to the African culture. The African culture prefers working less hours and having a social interaction other than working long hours uh, to achieve a goal at the cost of your your 
uh, well-being. So when we look at uh, uh, the products, the products are from China. Even a young child in Africa will, will rate that and tell you, I'm sorry, this product I cannot take. I'd rather take the products from USA, Germany, Italy, then they know most of the toys were made in China, even if exactly. they came from the United States. But looking at the quality, we talk of the quality, the durability. Do they last long? We look at the products that the, our colonial masters used to bring. Is what, what has put Africans to look at China as maybe something that produces uh, fake mm, products James for African You may have pointed to yeah. a deep-rooted problem that I myself also suffered a lot yeah. when it comes to uh, men's wear. If I visit a local supermarket and decide to buy a homegrown t-shirt, mm. in most cases it's inferior in quality to the one that I bought from a, an outlet on the city proper of New York. Exactly. This t-shirt was also made in China. So we put, your f we put our fingers on the issue of double standards yeah. and this is a big shame even the, most of the Chinese elites are so critical, vehemently critical of uh, the double standards that the Chinese entrepreneurs practice in their production of uh, the uh, um, whatever uh, cons consumer's product. So, Claire, do you share the same opinion that this is a, indeed a very embarrassing challenge for the Chinese? Oh, it's a challenge, but it's also an opportunity. I, I really like the word you use, James, it's complex. Yeah. And without doubt, you know, the previous colonial masters, as you said, made mistakes and drew lines across a continent, which la left a lasting legacy of pain. Um, I have to admit to both of you that I was actually part of the system. I was born in Zambia, so we were living in Kefue, and one thing we did see was the quality of the railway that China built, the Tanzan Railway, in the 70s. But uh, as, uh, subsequently, my, a lot of my family stayed in Nigeria, and one of them was working in a hospital, and he did say the quality of the beds, the, the, where the women were having their babies, was not good enough from China. So China might be excellent at infrastructure, but you're right, there are smaller goods which... Uh, the, Africa deserves the same quality as the US market for the T-shirt, for the, for the hospital bed, but... In some areas, China is really forging ahead. In infrastructure, I wish we had Chinese infrastructure in the UK. And I also really liked your point, James, on we don't work at the Chinese work rate. In Britain, we don't work at the Chinese work rate either, Yang Ray. Your most phenomenal export. We work at uh, 724. Workers. You work at uh, 724. Uh, the same the, uh, time. Very are, competitive yeah. Chinese product. Now, yeah. let's look at the image of China. Uh, let, let, sorry, let's look at the image of the United States. Mm. A friend of mine says it's only about two words, Donald Trump, who pulled out of the climate change pact in Paris, who rejected uh, uh, more burdens for the collective defense in continental Europe, and who puts America first. So do you think this uh, itself explains why the United States is becoming more unpopular with uh, Europeans, right, Claire? <laughs> yeah, I absolutely love seeing the body language between Merkel and Trump. <laughs> you know, you wouldn't like that to be your parents. Anyway, but um, m my view is that, um, you know, America is looking slightly ridiculous. I was over there at Chinese New Year, and I was shocked. I was standing outside the White House, and I could see three groups of protesters. So I spoke to each three. Where are you from? Oh, we're from the Catholic Church. Where are you from? We're the feminists. We're, we're fighting Trump. And where are you from? Oh, we're the Muslims. We don't like the, the, the Muslim Im immigration ban. It is very hard, Yang Ray, to unite these three protest groups. The pro-abortion group, the Catholics and the Muslims. You really, he has got some serious issues. And he's also got to, you know, the reason I think he's building a wall is because he can see what's coming next. Senator Rubio, you know, you look at the immigration into the US, Northern Europeans 150 years ago, then Southern Europeans, now it's Spanish and Chinese. You are gonna get a different president. He's not building a wall to keep Mexico out. He's building a wall to keep Rubio's voters out. So I think Trump is about one thing. He's not America first, he's Trump first. 
you know, it's a, and he's you, ego first. He's ego. He's Twitter first. He's politics, all about me. Local politics first. He's a CEO, but he's not. He's not a total idiot. I did watch him, and I did think he's a conservative economically, but he's also a conservative socially. Merkel's a conservative economically, but a liberal socially. That's the recipe for the 21st century. Thank you so much. You are watching Dialogue with Claire, James, and Hannah. We're discussing why China and the United States are seen by those polled uh, by Pill as neck and neck in the global popularity contest, with more countries seeing China as the world's top economic power. We'll be back in a short while. Stay with us, please. Welcome back. Again, the United States. Do you believe elites who receive very good education in the West uh, would always hold a very positive view about human rights, for example, and the political institutions on democracy, which itself uh, seems to be a controversial hallmark uh, that characterizes the institutions in the West? Hannah, what's your take? Well, it was interesting in the Pew survey which came out that even though China is seen as a uh, as a country which has is moving ahead very strongly economically. The views on the human rights in, in China、uh, really varied and differed across the across the different countries. So there were views from the, I guess, mostly Western countries saying that China doesn't uphold the human rights of its population, whereas on the other side, many countries in Africa and the Middle East felt that. Uh, the, the respondents certainly felt that、uh, that China does uphold、uh, the rights. I think there is, particularly in the UN, I think there is an opportunity to try and bring these discussions together and bring the different views together.、Um, the UN is a place where、uh, human rights and other fundamental、uh, aspects, whether it's democracy or so on, can be debated. I think China should engage even more with these discussions,、um, and and、uh, really in detail、um, sh share its its views and perspectives. We may send more delegations to the headquarters of the United Nations yeah, in New York that, to、different. explain the principles of the Chinese government on global and regional issues. However, they cannot reach a wide audience. The way dialogue here in the、mm. studio could do. Yes. Thank you for coming. Anyway, James.、Mm. Um, what do you think of uh, the uh, image of the United States uh, in terms of、uh, the image that President Xi Jinping projected in Davos, in the Winter Davos,、uh, the World Economic Forum, where he made it very clear China would stand for and would continuously support globalization and the free trade, whilst Donald Trump has left the TPP behind. He's renegotiating terms of NAFTA. He wants,、uh, you know,、uh, member states of TTIP to reconsider the terms that the United States does not like very much, or in other words, President Trump does not like very much. So, what do you think of、uh, this issue of putting America ahead of everything else? Does it mean the United States will keep a distance from the old image of global leadership? The states is no longer the states we knew in the in the early 19th century. This is now the states that matters、uh, where business matters. Trump is a businessman, and for you to, when you're projecting a profit in the long run, you act according to how much you're gonna gain, how much you're going to gain in the long run. So, but what, the issue is, what does it take to make a good world leader? Is it good enough to only have transactional skills, transactional skills to make a business deal with all? Economies with the current competition to who becomes the power, I believe it's about using the the business ideology of pushing the country forward. You cannot put the country in front, and yet the country is not going to gain. How will how will how how would one expect the states to gain? So Trump is looking at this angle. How much is the states going to gain? First of all, so、mm. let others take the lead. In other things like global warming and、uh, climate change and all that, then we all the states will come later. But when it comes to uh, security, uh, global security, I believe the states will come forward because they know the impact will be so massive and catastrophic to the state. Claire, in some countries surveyed, particularly in the UK, your country, the younger generation of adults is more favourable towards China than their elders. Why? I think it's because our generation. 
I'd like to count myself as almost the younger generation. We have more access to Chinese friends. There's 90,000 Chinese students in the UK at the moment. Uh, my niece, they want to learn Chinese, not French and German like in the old days. Uh, people's parents, they come to China. Uh, and they work here. So people are constantly talking about China because I, I think, you know, coming back to your point, I think today people, it's not about the art of the deal, it's about the art of the real. And what's real for most young people is can I get a job? Can I get an education? Exactly. Can I have good health care? Is my city going to blow up? Yeah. And these are things that global leaders tackle. These are things global leaders care about. Hmm, who are the global leaders I've seen on the stage recently? Yeah. Oh, yeah, who hosted G20? Who's hosted a couple of Olympics? Yeah. Maybe you are talking about the social media. Do you think Facebook and Twitter deserve more of the credit in bringing young people together to yeah. promote better understanding about the alien cultures such as China, Hannah. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. I mean, I get a great deal of understanding about <laughs> what's going on, uh, even within China and and so on. Even mm -hmm. even though I live here, um, also from from Twitter and so on, um, it's just difficult to access. <laughs> obviously, <laughs> while we're here, but it is important. It is important, and the more that uh, the more that China, CCTV, CGTN, and others actually share what is happening within China, the better, uh, the better that, uh, that people will understand what's really happening here. Let's look at the issue of nationalism. Uh, a second look at the results of the Pew survey, you find most of the countries surveyed hold a positive view about the United States simply because they are allies of the US. Mm. Now, the deployment of a THAAD a missile, a missile shield program in the ROK may have led to decline in their perception about China. Mm -hmm. Japan has long been mired in the dispute about the Diaoyu Islands, and therefore majority of the Japanese don't like China. Look at the Philippines, not the Fili Vietnam, which is also one of the claimants about the islets in the territorial waters of South China Sea. So these people in these countries don't speak highly of China and therefore we have good reasons to question the real motivation behind their attitude. Claire, do you buy this idea? I, I, th I mean the main issue is, I mean look at Trump's priorities since he's got into power. You're right, Thad, South Korea, we all know the battle for ships, he's just about to sell a whole load of stuff to Taiwan. Uh, Saudi Arabia king, how much stuff did he get? Hundreds of billions of weapons. As you say, Trump's a businessman, and if you've got his military kit in your backyard, you do feel like you're going to be, um, how can I say it, slightly subservient. But the reality is, most people, most days, aren't thinking about what military deterrent the government's just bought. They're thinking about, who can I do business with in my SME? They're thinking about education and health. And if China is going to trade with them on an Alibaba platform, on JD.com, they're going to trade with China. One thing Trump really gets is people really are motivated by their economic circumstance. And so he's trying to win votes at home by getting the dollar in the pocket again. Fine. But this is also, he doesn't necessarily, he has, may have the answer for the US people, but he certainly doesn't have the answer globally. And if you just give people, just because just I give you a gun doesn't mean you really like me. It means long term you might shoot me. Mm -hmm. So you've really got to really, really watch what Trump is doing with his military industrial complex because it might end up running him rather than him running it. James, you've been thinking very hard, but do you think uh, a good attitude needs to be educated? Uh, China has uh, uh, established and been running uh, institutions of Confucianism. And such institutes are said to have been flourishing across much of the sub saharan region. And they perform much better than in developed countries. Do you believe Chinese culture would come across as an indispensable part in shaping a healthy attitude towards the image of China? For Chinese culture has existed I am talking uh, at the context of African uh, uh, society. The Chinese culture has existed since China started producing 
uh, the martial arts movies like the Kung Fu, every child and traditional Chinese so medicine, true. TCM. Traditional Chinese medicine is viewed as voodoo, some kind of magic, uh, a traditional way of life or magic, uh, black magic way of surviving. But African, uh, Africans look at China as a, mainly, they know China is a source of, maybe source of defense. If you want to learn Kung Fu, you come to China. If you, as we're growing us, as the young people. You use a very important word of defense, yeah. not aggression or offense. Exactly, exactly. Does it mean that China is always put on the defense uh, in mm. the broader context of a geopolitical competition? Exactly. Oh, the powers, major powers. Exactly. Do you believe we look, China? We look at China as we're growing as young people. We looked at China as using, uh, what would I tell you, the Tai Chi form of circling. Mm. You do not need to attack your opponent, but you use the opponent's power to attack it. So why should you uh, move towards your opponent? So China is seen as the only source of uh, like defense and to, to try to accommodate everybody uh, within your surrounding and to mm. Okay, very quickly, mm. to draw a conclusion which may be open, yeah. not a real conclusion about our discussion here, in half an hour, very quickly, each of you give your opinion about what the future might hold for the image and softer power of the United States or China. Hannah. Let me say something about China. I think the more that China collaborates with other countries, for example, the Confucian Institute mm -hmm. is a very good model because you have two heads, one from the uh, one from the native country and one from China. Those kinds of collaborations will increase China's soft power in more ways than China can imagine. Mm. Mm. James. China is being halted uh, by the language barrier. If China could rectify that problem of language barrier and to communicate the truth of what it is mm. to the people yes. outside there, mm. I believe China would attain more support than our colonial masters have attained mm. in the past years. Claire. I'd just say once you've lived here, you've got no problems predicting uh, the future superpower. Thank you so much. We live in a world of uh, plurality, and China will definitely come across as a competitive force, economic and political alike. Thank you for being with us. I'll see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>